Hi, I'm Father Joseph Mary, and welcome back to A Simple Word, where we reflect on the Gospel for the coming Sunday. In 2012, the Cornerstone Bank in Waco, Nebraska was robbed, and over $6,000 stolen. The security cameras captured fuzzy images of a young female thief, and the bank employees were able to give the police a pretty good description of the teenage girl and the car she raced off in. As it turns out, the police didn't really need any of the descriptions. A few hours after the robbery, a video appeared on YouTube called Chick Bank Robber. The same 19-year-old girl appeared, fanning out the stolen cash in front of the camera and holding up a sign that read, I just stole a car and robbed a bank. Needless to say, her criminal career came to a brief end when police arrested her the following day. Why would she do something so foolish? Because pride blinds us. In today's Gospel, Luke presents us with the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. Notice to whom the parable is addressed. Luke begins, Jesus then addressed this parable to those who were convinced of their own righteousness and despised everyone else. The word translated as despised is stronger in the Greek, literally to count everyone else as nothing. Luke then introduces us to the two main characters in the parable. He writes, two people went up to the temple area to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other was a tax collector. It's important to remember that the devout Jew strictly observed three times of daily prayer, at 9 a.m., at noon, and at 3 p.m. And the Jews believed that prayer offered in the temple was especially efficacious. Jesus is telling us about two men in particular who went to the temple to pray, and they couldn't be more different. First, there's the Pharisee. Luke tells us that the Pharisee took up his position in the temple. Remember, the Gospel says elsewhere that the Pharisees love places of honor and prominence. So this Pharisee takes up a prominent, visible place in the temple. He raises his hands in the common Oran's position, and he begins to pray. Except that he really doesn't. Because this, is, this isn't really a prayer at all. And listen to what he says. Oh God, I thank you that I'm not like the rest of humanity. Greedy, dishonest, adulterous, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week, and I pay tithes on my whole income. This isn't a prayer. It's a list of his accomplishments. It's a litany of his own accolades. He says that he fasts twice a week. The Jewish law prescribed only one obligatory fast on the Day of Atonement, or Yom Kippur. But those who were especially devout, like the Pharisee, fasted every Monday and Thursday. And ironically, these are also the days of greatest commerce in Jerusalem, when country people flooded the city to shop at the markets. And it wasn't uncommon for those who fasted to smear their faces with a white powder to wear tattered, disheveled clothing. They wanted the largest possible audience for their piety. This Pharisee then prays that he pay tithes on his whole income. Again, the Jewish law said a man must pay the Levitical priest a tithe on all of his produce. But the Pharisees always go further. Remember, they're the separated elect, the ideal observers of the law. They pay tithes on everything even on those things for which there was no obligation to tithe. There's something frightening in this Pharisee's prayer. Notice the Greek says he spoke this prayer towards himself. He's not talking to God. He's standing in front of the whole assembly, arms raised, telling himself how wonderful and righteous he is. It's almost comical, except that it's not. It's not funny at all, because look what it's done to him. He's so self-assured, self-righteous. He's so blind. He's not there to glorify God. He's there to glorify himself. But he does this only by trampling on everyone else, on those who count as nothing, like the miserable, sinful tax collector. 
as we read these words, we may marvel that anyone could be so blind. Before we condemn too harshly, we better examine our own hearts. We who call ourselves disciples of Jesus Christ, we who are faithful Catholics, who do we look down on? Who do we judge? Who do we raise ourselves above? People with hair dyed red and body piercings? Gamblers and junkies? Pregnant teenagers? Lapsed Catholics? Those who only attend Mass on Easter and Christmas? The list goes on and on. On whose broken backs have we climbed to enshrine our own piety? We're not so different than the Pharisee. Less theatrical, maybe. We're not so different. Luke then presents us with a man whose situation couldn't be a more extreme contrast. A tax collector. Tax collectors were Jews whose job was to collect taxes on behalf of the Roman Empire. They had to bid on the contract for collecting taxes in a certain district. And if they won the contract, they would be responsible to Rome for delivering the agreed-upon money. These men weren't just hated because they were traitors to their own people. They were hated because they assessed more taxes than was legal in order to beef up their income. So if a farmer or carpenter couldn't pay, he'd be turned over to the Roman soldiers. Tax collectors used extortion, coercion, and threats to line their own pockets. These men were the scum of the earth. Notice the striking contrast in how this sinful man prays. He stands at a distance. His head's bowed in shame. He's beating his breast in mourning. And all he can say is, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. But the Greek translation is not a sinner, but the sinner. God, have mercy on me, the sinner. In his own eyes, he's not just a sinner. He's the sinner par excellence. He's the worst of sinners. He sees the truth about who he really is. There's nobody worse. Look at what Jesus is doing here. He's saying this man who keeps all the rules, who observes the law with the utmost perfection, has been blinded by his pride. He can't see the truth about himself, and so he can't see the truth about God. But this bent, broken, weeping tax collector, this man who doesn't dare raise his eyes to heaven, this man can see. He sees the truth about who and what he is. And so he comes to know the truth about God. And who is God? In relationship to sinful man, who is God? In the Old Testament, Moses asked God for his identity. And God responded, Yahweh, I am. It's a sentence, but it's, it's incomplete. It's an identity without a focus. God remains a mystery until Jesus Christ. Jesus is a Hebrew name, Yeshua, meaning God saves. Only in Jesus Christ do we come to know the fullness of the divine name, Yahweh Yeshua. I am the God who saves. But the great tragedy of the Pharisee is that he doesn't know he's a sinner. His pride has blinded him to a fundamental reality of the human condition. And because he really doesn't know who he is, he doesn't know who Jesus is. He doesn't see a need for Jesus. He doesn't need a savior. He's pitifully, damningly blind. But Jesus says to the tax collector, he went home justified. The tax collector saw the truth about himself, and so he saw the truth about God. The sight of his overwhelming sin convinced him of the divine identity. I am the God who saves you. As we examine our lives today, as we look at our relationship with God and how we treat other people, especially the poor and the marginalized, we need to ask a fundamental question. Do I know the truth about myself? Despite all our gifts and talents, despite how careful we are to be faithful to His commandments and the teachings of the church, do we really know the truth about ourselves? Can we really see? In Jerusalem, in the church of the Holy Sulpicar, is the tomb in which Jesus Christ was buried and resurrected. If a pilgrim wants to enter the tomb to pray, there's only one way to get through the low stone doorway. On your knees. Humility teaches us the truth about ourself and the truth about God. I'm Father Joseph Mary, and thanks for listening to A Simple Word. 
you like, be sure to share, subscribe, and we'll see you next week.